What the hell are the Giants doing? Winning every win, they are hurting themselves in the future. They still don't have a quarterback, and to get a good one, especially when you're this bad, generally you want to be picking a top the draft. They're not going to do that now, winning two games in a row. Uh, that means nothing to me. I, I honestly like what the Giants are doing right now. I tweeted this yesterday. Like To me, culture is so much more important than some random draft slot that you don't even know if the guy's going to work out. Uh, look, don't get me wrong, Sal. I know what you mean. Like, just as as a general premise, when things are going badly, and they were so bad, I mean, 40 to zip, the first half against the Cardinals, the Niners game on Thursday, there were so many different levels of ineptitude for the Giants. It was so bad that I understand why a lot of people wanted to rack up the losses and give yourself a chance to get the best quarterback here. But I don't know, maybe I'm just, and not only because of the Jets with Zach Wilson at number two, but... I mean, I was just looking at some of these previous drafts. I and mean, what do you think people were saying back in 2015? Oh, my God, we got to get Jameis Winston. Oh, my God, we got to get Marcus Mariota. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jamarcus Russell before that, 2002. David Carr, Joey Harrington. Joe, I remember watching Joey Harrington at Oregon putting up these sick numbers. They had a big billboard of him in Times Square. And Joey Harrington basically turned out to be a scrub. Even Trevor Lawrence, who was really good, uh, but... You know, is he really fully get what we thought he would be? No, but, I don't think he is. But the difference is, I'm not arguing that the draft could be a crapshoot, and obviously teams miss a lot more, it seems, than they hit on these things. However, the Giants need a quarterback, and they have Brian Dable, who's an offensive guy, who's developed quarterbacks. That's a strength to get this team out of the hell that they have been in here for the last seemingly decade plus they're going to need a franchise quarterback unless you believe it's Tommy DeVito and we'll do more on him in a little bit. Yep. And I, again, I'm not expecting them saying they got to go out there and lose these games, but they already, so I have a big issue with them already blowing the season. And then once the season is blown and you start saying, okay, we'll now get a top pick. Now they start to win some games. Now they actually let Tommy DeVito throw the football and they're winning these games. And it, every win, while it feels good, maybe for giant fans watching them here mm-hmm. and not imploding and trusting that Dable knows what he's doing. It is hurting them in the future. We don't feel it now, but you will feel it next year. Well, you will, uh, possibly, if you get the right guy. And there's no reason that they can't move up and draft somebody. And I know we'll get more to DeVito later on. Mm -hmm. There's also no reason why Tommy can't keep spinning this magic in Tommy DeVito. I mean, Penn's the most unlikely story in the history of New York football. I mean, again, we'll get more to Tommy in a bit, DeVito, but... Uh, there's more wins coming, so brace yourself. They've got the bye. I know the Packers uh-huh. are are more competitive now. Than, That's not going to be an easy game. It's not going to be. I'm not I mean, saying it's going to be easy. It, it, not going to be easy. Here's the problem. They're not good. Well, okay. All right. I, I like Dable and Shane, and we'll hear from Shane coming up. You just heard Jerry mention at 1030 as his bye week, you know, state of the Giants address is fine. I'm looking forward to seeing what Shane has to say here. Me too. They're not good. I understand that. And, like, dude, it's, I understand it, they're not it, good. It, I mean, we'll do the Jets a little bit later. I can't wait to get to that disaster. <laughs> but had the Giants beat the crappy Jets like they should have, like I predicted they would and they should have, then maybe it would be a different story. And maybe they'd have a season. Maybe we'll look forward to after the bye week, a huge Monday night game against the Packers as far as the landscape of the NFC. Yeah. But they didn't. So we can't just sit here and say, well, if they, I mean, the, the Giants had a chance to have a season. They blew it early on. Then they had a chance to get a top pick and get a quarterback and maybe change their fortunes moving forward. And now they're blowing that by winning. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 we're having the same conversation, but I, 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 you know, I almost feel like I could easily go in a different direction. I don't want to dilute this with the, like the minutia of both quarterbacks that are thought to be top three top. I mean, I'm not sold on Caleb Williams, and I'm not sold on May. Right, but you need to be sold some hope if you're a Giant fan. About- no, no, no. You see, that I did, yes, but the hope to me is where you and I fundamentally right. disagree. To me, the hope is is that the Giants and Dable has that he's he's reasserted his his I would say his power over the team, but his juice within the organization or within the fan base. Like it's it's a lot more appealing to me, big picture. To believe that the Giants have the guy. And I believe that Dable is the guy. And I've never wavered from that. Uh, yeah, we had the Belichick discussion a couple of weeks mm-hmm. ago. And I flat out said I would not bring Belichick in for oh Dable. Oh, my God. After watching that game yesterday, no. I have to take everything I've said about Belichick back. Yeah, but you weren't alone, to be fair. Uh, and it's Belichick, so it's not a, some crazy notion. It's oh, Bill no, Belichick. I, know, I understand you, I mean, that. my God, dude. They, they have sunk. They, 
Dude, talk about quarterbacks. Outside of the Jets situation, the Patriots may have the two worst quarterbacks in the league. They really might. I mean, they suck. They are horrible. Anyway, we and that was a rough yeah. game to watch, and 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 they're both bad. You're right. Some of those throws that Mac Jones oh made were God, indescribably. I, it, it, they were just pathetic. But the, the the point was, like, I worried. I really fe- and I said this on the air. I worried that if the Giants' season kept going in the direction that it was going. 40 nothing, mm-hmm. 30 to 6, 29 to 3. I mean, and let's face it, you got to play the Eagles twice, so you'll probably right. get a couple of those scores there. But you got a chance to hang with the Sage, you got a chance to beat the Rams, you got a chance to beat the Packers, you got a chance to squeeze out seven wins or so. And, you know, at least aesthetically, you know, and like change the way this season was going in a hurry. And if it kept going in that direction, you know how it goes here. Here come the calls. Here come the tweets. Here comes the noise. Maybe Dable's not the guy. Uh, Wink right. and Dable. Uh, maybe Shane's not the guy. Whiffed on Evan Neal. Like, and I was worried that if they didn't stabilize this, that the Giants might do something irrational. So to me, these wins are more important than some quarterback in, in pole dunk wherever. We don't know if he's the real deal. I'll take the wins, and I'll take the coaching stability. Understood. Better for the Giants. But I never thought, neither did you deep down, even if we were going to get to that level. Now, maybe there would have been some questions about it, but I never thought the Giants were going to make a change from Shane and Dable. So then it says, okay, well, once they establish that these two are going to be the guys moving forward, Then it's, well, how are they going to close the gap? Have the Giants, by winning some of these games... See, they haven't changed the way that I view them. Coming into the year, I thought they were going to be better than what they've proven to be. Okay. And then even at their worst, I still thought they were going to get back to respectability, which they've kind of done for the most part here. Now, again, still some season left where they could go the wrong way here, maybe get blown out against the Packers, Saints, who knows, Eagles, whatever. There's no guarantee the Giants, to me, are going to win two, three games the rest of the way, but... Okay, Dable and Chain are here. That's what's established, right? They're not going anywhere. They got back to some sense of respectability. Yep. How are they closing the gap? Well, first of all, they're better than the Commanders. I mean, you could you could say that. Uh, the Commanders at least have a quarterback, and they're going to have a new head coach moving forward. And you could say that they're better than the Commanders. They have the same record. I know they beat them twice, but... Beat, yeah, no, I, I, I'm not saying they're much better, and it's certainly debatable, but... You know, look at the two other teams in the division. The gap is wide. Well, well, I'm not going to lie. The gap is the very pl- wide, Dallas so, like, and Philly. what's the plan for next year? Had the Giants continued losing, the plan would have been Shane Dable, draft a quarterback, yep. develop the quarterback with Shane and Dable. That, that, and then evaluate from there. I, what's the plan now? I, I, I'll tell you. I think the plan is that it's happened almost um, – unexpectedly because modern football is built on offense. The plan very well might be for the Giants to have another dominant kick-ass defense, which, by the way, is what the Giants always have when the Giants win Super Bowls. Like, I'm starting to watch this defense. I'm starting to like what I'm seeing. And they did it without Dexter Lawrence. Yes, they didn't even play. Yeah, yeah but they did it against the I Patriots. I understand the Patriots are horrendous. I mean, but they have, Banks the Giants is a pl- have four wins, dude. Banks is a player. Thibodeau's a player. Lawrence is a player. They've got some yeah. players. They, they have four wins. A couple good linebackers. So Carrick gave a big play. McFadden's been really uh, good. Like, right. I look at this, so I, I understand that, yeah, to close the gap and to become the team Giant fans want them to become, they're going to have to have better offense, but I can even tell you this. If they had Andrew Thomas for an extra game or two, they might have an extra win, probably the Jets game, and they're in a playoff run. They beat the Cardinals, Commanders twice, and the New England Patriots, Understood. who are the worst team in football. And they're going to have more wins than the Jets. Uh, New England are actually worse than Carolina, for my money, which is hard to believe. They are uh, worse than Carolina. They are Atrocious. That. Carolina's bad, bro. Our friends at Town Fair Tire remind you that at Town Fair Tire, you always get the guaranteed lowest price on name brand tires from Connecticut to Maine. Nobody beats Town Fair Tire. Nobody will hear from Joe Shane in about 20 minutes or so. Let's hear from you guys right now. Matt is calling from Massachusetts. What's up, Matt? Hey, Matty. Hey, what's going on, fellas? How you doing today? Good. 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 All right. First, I just want to say to the tri-state area, for you two guys, people need to back off because you guys represent the frustration of New York. I get it. I 100% get it. We haven't had a winner anywhere in so long. I mean, the Knicks, the Yankees, the Giants, the Jets, the Mets, the Rangers, we haven't won in so long. And you guys represent the frustration that we as the fan base has. And, and I get it. I get it. I thank you guys. People need to just back off with that. I just, I just back off what? That. Yeah, I'm not sure. Back off what, though? What do you mean? Back off what? Uh, just I hear a lot of grief with with or just the stuff I read with your show with the frustration. Oh well, well that's fine. The, the, the ratings are telling a very yeah, different guys, story. Yeah. Trust the me. The ratings are there. <laughs> the yeah, ratings are good, buddy. Yeah, I know you guys are good. Like I just want Thanks. people to back off. Like, I, I appreciate that. That's all good. Frustrated. Listen, Maddie. Maddie, people are gonna have opinions. The worst yeah, thing. No, no, it's all. Have... And I want listen. The worst thing that you can be is a show. 
as as a show is to not generate a reaction. That's our job. Agreed. That's agreed. it, man. Go ahead, buddy. No, agreed. All right, I just want to point out, you know, with the win from the Giants, they've shown to us that they are not a top five picking team. All right, you know, you look at the teams that they beat. You know, they just they beat the bad teams. All right, and one other point that we want that nobody's addressed is, I think had Jones been here and not gotten hurt, we beat Buffalo and we beat the Jets. Mm. And you're looking at. I don't maybe, know about Jones. Not. You think it's the same outcome? I don't know about Daniel Jones, Matt. Sal, I, I know you're with Jones. me. Well, well, here's the thing, Matt. Uh, I've yeah. watched – obviously, we've, we've watched all the Giant games, right? And we've seen what Jones can do, what Tyrod Taylor could do, and now what DeVito can do. I, I don't think anybody has thrown the ball for the Giants better than DeVito has. That's a great point, Sal. I want to point out that, you know, Barkley's been there that Barkley went down and Jones didn't have him. Look, Barkley you know, was, I, Barkley's been there that, with Jones, though, before. I'm not talking about just the results, know, Matt. I, and I'm sorry for cutting you off there. Thank you for the call. Thanks, Matt. I'm not talking about just the results. Tommy DeVito yeah. has been playing the position better than Jones and Tyrod Taylor. I know it's a small sample size. Dude, he's made throws that – Yep. Actually, nobody in this town has made this year. Mm-hmm. Not Zach, not Timmy Boyle, <laughs> nobody. Now, what's that saying? It's crazy. I mean, we're talking about the bottom of the barrel, but DeVito makes professional throws. Jalen Hyde, first 100-yard game. Boom. Well, there how, you go. How'd that happen? Uh, Same Tommy receiver. DeVito. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Same receiver. No, offensive line. All of a sudden, the offensive line looks better with Tommy DeVito. I don't care about the sacks. Yeah, no, I'm game. with you, but there's no turnovers. I'll take some sacks. That's right. okay. I'll take some sacks. It's, he'll get better at that, you would hope. You know, making a decision to throw the ball away instead of taking the sack, that's fine. But right now where he's at, when he does stand in there and throw the football down the field on third and long, yep. dude, he's dropping dimes. Did, did Danny you... Dimes, my ass. Oh. Tommy Dimes. Uh, well, how about I mean, Tommy? Dude, uh, yeah. We got to come up with a name. We got to come up I with mean, a name. come on, I know dude. we got the emojis and, you yeah. know, we got to come up with a name for DeVito. Have to. Um, did you... Um, did you see? Well, I know you did, but when he when he put the ball on the turf and he got it back yesterday, right? Mm-hmm. Did you read the article? I think it was Serbia. I guess it was a Q and A in the post over the right. weekend with Tommy. Did you I see did that? not see that. Okay, no. usually I do. I missed that. It was really yeah. I know you usually check it out. That's why I asked you. It was mm. really good, and he spoke about a lot of different things and his time at Syracuse, which was up and down, and he got sacked a lot. And you know, one thing that I noticed about the veto, and I, I say that he put one on the turf, even though he got it back. He his ball protection. I noticed this is good. Like, he senses and, you know. He's not he, reckless with it. Doesn't leave it out there. It's not like out there like a loaf for like Brett, like Zach his first year mm-hmm. or Jones his first year. Like, he senses, I think because he got popped a lot at Syracuse, the old line was bad. Their coaches got fired, as you know, uh, up there. And, and they had not been a very good program. And he would get hit a lot. And when you get hit a lot, if you go to school on that, you learn how to hold on to the football. So, I don't know where we're going with Tommy, uh, but it I, I, this ride is interesting. And he it's did it, awesome. He did it yesterday in a spot where I didn't think he could against the Belichick defense. And, again, not that the Giants were lighting it up, certainly, but he made huge throws in this game. And he's done that now repeatedly. Tommy DeVito is actually playing really well. Scott is calling from Tampa. What's up, Scott? What's going on, guys? How are you, Scott? Uh, I'm good, thanks. Sal, I love you, but come on. There are five quarterbacks out there in college. If you could tell me which one of those five is going to be the next star in the NFL, you're the only one in the country. Not only that, there's not the defensive player a la Miles Garrett, Nick Bosa coming out, who's a top one or two pick, you know for sure. The only guy you know that's a lock who's going to be a stud is Harrison. Marvin Harrison Jr. Harrison. And as a Giant, there's no way you're taking a receiver with a top four or five pick in the draft. You're not going to win another game the rest of the year if you look at the schedule. So you get a couple of wins. Maybe you change the culture, get some guys some wins, and you move on. There's no way you know who the best player is. Nobody, is. Nobody's saying, nobody knows who the best player is. Nobody's saying that. So then if you're picking, so Sal, if you're picking second or seventh, then what's the difference? If you well, get five picks. Wilson, what do you mean? You'd rather, well, you'd rather have the seventh pick if you win four games no, or no, two no, games? Sal, what's the difference? You don't know. Sal, you don't know who it nobody is. Nobody knows. The the Scott, draft. Scott, so, what good are two wins doing for you? Well, but you know what? Maybe you're getting some guys some wins, some rookies on this team who need to learn how to win in the NFL. Right. I, right. Again, the change between the second pick and the seventh pick, you don't know who's going to be the, good. The change so what's, from, what's the difference? The, the change from the second pick to the seventh pick is much more significant than it is from winning two games to winning four games or five games. Really, Sal? So Zach Wilson yes. to Josh Allen at the second to seventh pick, that's not a big difference. Zach Wilson was the second pick. 
Josh Allen was the seventh. I'd rather ha- I'd rather pick five games higher than I would rather have three more meaningless and you wins. Have just as much of a chance. Well, well Scott, here, Scott, here's where I'm go- Scotty, uh, th- thanks for the call. But I disagree a little bit. I get your premise. I'm with you, Scott. I, I think the only thing that you're leaving out, Scott, is if you're picking second versus seventh, you do increase the odds of hitting on the player because you control the draft board outside of one team. You could also trade out of that spot. But I am with you that nobody knows, and Sal didn't say that he knows. None of us know. None of us. I even said before, like, as good as, you know, Trevor Lawrence was supposed to be Peyton Manning. Right. He's got 11 touchdowns this year. It's right. December. 11. Now, this team With is winning. With weapons all over the place. Weapon, good Calvin head coach. Rid- yes. Re- T- ETN, good coach. And by Jack the way, Calvin I said Ridley. at the time, I don't believe in tanking. So I said at the time, Jeff fans are idiots for rooting for their team to lose. You have enough of that on your own. You're going to root for the team to lose, tank for Trevor. It, it, Trevor Lawrence would have sucked here because it's not about him. It's about the team and the foundation or lack thereof. And this is not about who the Giants are going to select. It's about having a higher draft pick when, when they're winning meaningless games. These games mean nothing. Okay, but th- again, this is where I think we really fundamentally right. disagree. Like, to me, if this was year five for Dable and mm-hmm. there was real – more deeply embedded equity, like he made the playoffs a couple of times and there wasn't such a precipitous fall after a great year like last year. Because let's face it, up until these last couple of games, there were some Giant fans who were saying, oh, this might be a one-and-done kind of deal in terms of one-and-done success. And now we're back to being what we used to be. Uh, So when you're in year two and year one goes far ahead of schedule, but then there's this thump of a drop, 40 zip, mm-hmm. 31 sig, destroyed, statistically inept in every area. It's, I think, the culture that was created the first year, I think it largely dissipates when it gets so ugly. Right, but they've they've righted the ship now. That's why you keep saying, what do these extra wins do? Yeah. That's what it yeah, does. But, it but, reinforces the culture. But I never thought that they were that bad anyway. Oh, they were bad. Come on. No, there no, was a I point never, where we talked about the Giants look like an expansion team. I understood, but I never thought that they were going to be that bad anyway. I've been saying all year long, I thought they were going to right the ship. I believed in them. Okay, so let me ask you. How many wins do you think the Giants end up with? They have four right now. Uh, I'm going to probably give them six. I think they'll beat the Rams at home. Uh, I, that Saints game, I mean, I think mm. it's going to be low scoring and ugly. I'll give them a puncher's chance. Packers better or the I, Giants? I, I thought the Giants would beat the Packers. I said a couple of weeks ago, Giants, but Packers are playing better. Uh, flip a coin. Yeah. I don't know. Right, so five, six wins? Like, does that make yeah, a big six. difference? Well, it's better than going 2-15 and 15 with an average margin of uh, average margin won't defeat, 29.7 points per game. Yeah. Uh, look, I mean, I'd rather have the higher pick. When all said and done, I understand. I'm not believing in tanking. I'm just saying I'd rather have the higher pick. Then win two meaningless games here. What if it's four more? I oh, mean, that, you're putting a ceiling well, on it. Well, eight versus two is a big difference. 